No <laughs> <more fighting. laughs> just I'm actually uh, I'm actually writing to Charlene um, because I'm trying to get all the ins and outs and what I got to do so that I can get all the stuff going with for Psycon. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually need to talk to you about that oh, too. Sure, because, yeah. Yep. Um, uh, and I, I'm, I'm open for everybody else, so it doesn't matter. My main concern um, with looking at some of the links today, mm -hmm. I got the one link that if I still want to get into it, um, it was a link for like $5 or something. Yeah, those are the events. Yep. Okay. So do I, when I want to be in each event, is it, I, it's $5 each per event? Yes. And just for clarity, the book expo is you get three books for one expo. Okay, now, okay, well, I'll talk to you about that in email because I know right now for memoir, I only have the one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how my other books will play into effect with that. Send them. Well, I'll figure something out. Um, and that's really, we, in order to get the staffing together, the demand has to be there. And I think Karina ran into this somewhat this year um, where it, it's, well, you, you're, you're writing a West, you have a Western published. We don't have a Western genre. But if you keep holding out for that Western genre to be there, the demand's never going to be to present itself to get the, the talk going, to get the motivation going, to have readers go, oh, that's a genre. We can do that, which is where Psycon gets a lot of its growth from, is person A will look at what person B is doing and go, oh, that's a great idea. We can do that. So what I say is get the Western in here. Present it. Show other Western authors that, yes, you can bring your Western in. There is a place for you here. Uh, so absolutely bring it in, and we'll, we'll find a place for it. I do have a location where I am pl planning on putting additional books with only one or two in the groups. We can't do a genre tour with that. We cannot do a blog tour with that. But we can do giveaways. We can do a few other things with it. And this is one of the things I love about the plug and Ani introduced me to. If you hit on your name, it's going to take you to all your books. So, and then you've got your own private little showcase under Richard White. So you want all your books there. When they click on Richard White, you want to you wanna start a fan club with that base. And I'm going to say this over and over and over. Grow your newsletter list this year. Absolutely push those newsletter subscribes more than anything else. I'm having trouble figuring out how to, like... Right now, I've sent all my all my information, all the forms, mm -hmm. but I don't know where to put or or what to do with with my email subscribe link. The email subscribe link, I would put that in your bio. And your bio, I found a way to just do that. The other thing, and this is what I strongly recommend, is when you do the blog tour, the genre tour, when mm -hmm. you do the author showcase, put it there. So that when people are at your blog, when they are going through the genre tour and perhaps they find your contribution there or um, what is it called? Or your, uh, your author showcase, you have the ability to say subscribe to my newsletter. And um, don't actually, I wouldn't recommend doing a link on your post. I would actually have the form on your post. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you can, using, if you're using WordPress, you know, you can put things like that because really, when you deal with when you deal with people, the less the less links mm -hmm. they have to go through, the less yes. scrolling they have to go through, the happier they are. Yeah, that is the I psychology mean, of web browsers. If yeah. you give them a fill this in, they are more yeah. likely to present an email address than a yeah. go to this link. The other yeah. thing is we have blogger bits happening, and that is where you are going to post that. And I have a form for that. Um, and I will probably be sending out another blast out or by email where mm -hmm. if you have a subscribe list, get it in blogger uh, bits. The other thing that I haven't told anyone else I'm doing, I have a newsletter subscribe all that I am pushing through. So if, um, if a reader goes through and says, hey, I just want to subscribe to everybody's newsletter, they can. Surprise, after PsyCon, I was going to hand that list over to authors. And mm -hmm. say, here, but, you've got but, these but when you do that, when, when, if we do do the su subscribe all, and this is, comes from personal experience, I did mm -hmm. do an event with Angela. I lost people because I didn't confirm afterwards. And yeah. actually, you have to, by Federal Trade Commission law, you actually have to confirm, do a double opt-in. Mm -hmm. Because you can't 
expect people one to remember that they did it and two mm -hmm. um people are so overwhelmed they want a sense of control so you mm -hmm. want to make sure that when you do your list no matter where you get it one don't buy cheap lists do not buy lists no. off of fiverr whatever you do if somebody wants to say hey i got this great list of ten thousand people now i probably, do they I, probably they probably scraped it from the internet and you're going to get more rejections from that list because you're technically not allowed to use third party lists see it's it, yeah it, it, it has to be first party first party Karina, we just did that. Um, we had an Amazon gift card newsletter subscribe list. And for every subscription they did, this was for the romance genre for Valentine's Day. I think we got just shy of 300 authors or readers subscribed to that. Um, how many unsubscribes did you see, Karina? If you can recall. 30. 30, so about 10% unsubscribed. I had 10% of mine, and it yeah. killed me on MailChimp. Yeah, and that was, yeah, I think that was your, um, you had just the 300. So when you had tw that, that 30, the unsubscribed was the 10%. Well, it was 195, and I went down to, to 500. It, it, yeah, it was 195. I had 20 people unsubscribed, right. and that was it. It killed my list for MailChimp. Now, oh, no. I, go ahead. Well, no, because I'm just, I'm at a technical question um, mm -hmm. because I have. a technical person here. Well, see, I have WordPress and I have create and not create space, uh, constant contact. Right. And apparently they're not friends because if I take the code that they give me, cause there's like the pop-up window that comes up, like Angela has on her website. And I know that's what I want. Are you wordpress.com or wordpress.org? Wordpress.com. Okay. That's your problem. You're hosted, you're hosted by wordpress.com. And WordPress.com does not allow for plugins. It does not allow for JavaScript. It has a hard time with iframes. They want, it's part of their security. They don't want people bringing in crap that will technically violate the, um, the sanctity of their sites because really what they're doing is they're running an advanced WordPress multi-site installation. So if one site is compromised, it could potentially compromise everything else. If you're on a self-hosted site like Angela and I are, you have a lot more freedom. Constant contact would work on your site. WordPress, I mean, I'm using MailChimp's code on my site. So it's, it's your platform. Yes, WordPress.com is great for the beginners to start out, but you reach a certain point in your sales, you reach a per certain point in your marketing, you better start thinking about WordPress.org. Just so I got to upgrade to get that to, because right now, my, no, I, have I have a couple upgrade. different. You don't have to upgrade. You just go find your own, you find, your, you go find your own host and you go install Word, you know, or, well, I feel that you're technical enough that you could install it yourself and support it yourself. Some people would have to hire somebody like me, but, as I said, once you reach a certain level, it's not an upgrade. It's a changeover. It's a change to a different platform. Basically. Yeah, but I thought they, I thought they aligned because I, they I, do. so they do if, because if it's, I it's, just, if I move from .com to .org and that allow me to get my, my subscribe link to work right. more effectively. You than can export content from dot, .com to .org. They do align because you have the same core. You have the same the same setup, the same database structure, the same everything. You just don't have the freedom to install the the posts. Or, I mean, the extra stuff that you really need to run a marketing website mm -hmm. because it, it, they really want you to either pay for the services so they can pay for the manpower that supports those services. Or they want to just basically, and they want to protect themselves. They want to make sure that they offer a secure, hassle-free environment for people who just want a website and don't want to, you know, don't want to care. They just want to write. They don't care about the external um, things. Um, yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. Because right now, right now, I have a. Uh in my contact me lat tab i have a little link there yeah. and no one can see it but i have all my social media things it's just a dot 
And if you mm-hmm. click on the dot, and I'm like, I got to find a way to get the pop-up. What pop-up I've thing. been doing with that, because I ran into a lot of problems. First, I did the pop-up, and then I did the uh, plugins. What I find works best, and it's interchangeable, is just code. I just take yeah. images, I shrink them down, and then I embed links into them. And the ones you see on my website are the ones you see on my Goodreads are the ones you see on my email. It's the same code just over and over again. So I don't have to worry about plugins and complicating or layering my code. So do you just right. make the image a link? I literally take it from Google Images. I go like Twitter, find mm-hmm. their logo, shrink it down, link it to my Twitter uh, my Twitter link. Uh-huh. And same thing with Facebook, with Instagram. So I go out and find their actual logos. I link them all side by side. I make them all about 100 or 50, 75 by 75. And then I just take my, my link and embed them. So you can click my Twitter. You can click my Facebook. The only thing I cannot do is you cannot like a Facebook article or you cannot share it. That's what that's the disadvantage. But that's where I, br- I brought in a link or a plug-in to do that part of it. Right. So... And that was because I just, I ran into so many problems with, um, with plugins. I just didn't have the aptitude for tech uh, to get what I wanted done on my website efficiently. Um, social media, the, the little links has taken over my, my, uh, my, my uh, websites and I hate it. At the bottom of every little thing, there's like, share and like, share and like, and I just we we it. can we can actually address that if you want. Tell me what pages you don't want it on. I can actually go in there and and do some some uh, CSS CSS. Yes, I know computer crap. Yeah, and that CSS actually, stands for computer. <laughs> I I I I, don't, I can't remember. I had a really great. <laughs> yeah, but that. It, it actually stands for cascading style sheet. But if you tell me the pages you don't oh, want it on, it was computer make- shitty stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's CSS. But, but if you tell me the pages you don't want it on, yeah. I can actually go in there, find the page IDs, and make it just do a display none, and yeah. it'll be gone like that. So you yeah. just computer you just shitty tell, stuff. Computer shitty stuff, yes. Yeah. But that's what I specialize is in computer shitty stuff. I clean yeah. horse poop all day. Yeah, I, I I hate that stuff. I hate CSS. I don't. Well, yeah, but that's why you have me. That's right. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm I'm in that. So, uh, 